harsh, bright lighting can be incredibly annoying, creating distracting shine on the skin. A worst case scenario, this area can be blown out, clipped to pure white, or even have an unwanted color cast, making it stand out from the rest of the healthy looking skin. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve is here to help us fix it. In today's tutorial, I will show you a robust manual method for controlling skin shine that gives you far more control than the automated tool and works in the free version of DaVinci. But first, let's look at the simple solution available in the studio version so you understand its limitation. Switch to the color page in the OpenFX panel, find face refinement and drop it onto your node. Click detect faces in frame. If you don't see the green box or boxes, make sure to enable OpenFX overlay under your viewer. Next, select the face you need to correct. I have only one here that is already selected and click track forward and backward in the inspector on the right. Check that the face was tracked properly and then disable the show overlay option. Now just scroll down to shine removal and move the slider to the right. This method has its downsides. It's limited to the studio version, it only affects facial skin and it lacks uh, advanced controls. Moreover, the tracking can be time-consuming and sometimes inaccurate. So let's move on to the more powerful solution. On the color page, navigate to the qualifier tool. Select the area of the skin shine. While holding the mouse button, drag a little to capture the entire problematic area. Press Shift plus H to see your selection clearly. You can use the picker with the minus symbol to subtract unwanted areas or the picker with the plus symbol to add more. The selection doesn't have to be perfect right now, so don't spend too much time here. We have granular controls for the selection under the picker. Hue, saturation and luminance. Start with luminance to isolate the brightness. Then refine with saturation and finally hue. While adjusting these, it's best to add some softness to prevent artifacting. When the adjustments are made, you can finalize the selection using the controls on the right. Play around with clean black and clean white to refine your mask. If you see tiny spots missing from your selection, try increasing the denoise and pre-filter settings slightly. If you still see some jagged edges or artifacts, increase the post-filter radius for a smoother result. Now press Shift plus H again to hide the mask, move to the color wheels, and generally decreasing the highlight setting is the easiest and best looking option. If that doesn't look quite right, go to the curves. Hold Option or Alt on Windows, click in the middle to set an anchor, and then drag the top right point down. This provides more control and a more gradual change. Ok, we've changed the brightness, but the color might still look off. To fix that, you can add color by switching back to color wheels tool and pushing the offset wheel slightly towards the browns. This is fast, but downside is that it requires extremely careful movements. A more controllable approach is to add the color compressor effects onto the node from the effects list. Now in the inspector, click onto the color picker and select the target color from the area of normal skin close to the shiny region. Next, drag the compress hue and compress saturation sliders all the way up. Leave Compress Luminance at its default or drag it just a little bit. If a skin color now looks too uniform, either drag the sliders back to the left a bit or adjust the overall effects blend parameter. If you're still not happy with uh, brighter spots, try decreasing the midtone detail in the color wheels section. Now we've made these skin areas quite flat. So it's time to reintroduce some detail. Add another node by pressing Option plus S. Connect the blue output from the previous node into the blue input of this new one, so you don't have to apply the qualifier manually again. Now drag and drop the texture pop effect onto this new node. Here in the inspector, switch the operating mode to Advanced. Set the color mode to Luma Chroma. In the Details drop-down, set the strength 
to 1. Then drag each slider below it individually to see what details are being brought back. Usually for skiing increasing either tiny or fine details or a combination of uh, these two work best. Adjust the overall strings and detail sliders as needed to make the skin look natural but not too rough. Sometimes if the shine area is clipped into pure white, no information can be salvaged and we can't use texture pop. Instead, I would suggest to add a subtle film grain effect to make the affected area blend in better. Here I can see that I probably pushed a bit too far, but there is a quick way to quickly push back the overall effect. Select all the nodes uh, with your mouse and press create compound node. Now in the node key settings, decrease the key output gain. That's it. And if you like to know one of the fastest way to get a teal and orange look, check this video right here.